Hello, welcome to what's bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at Zim Transform. So here's an example. We can pick this shape up, and we can scale it from any of our corners. We can um, squash it. <laughs> stretch it, we call it, and here as well. Uh, we can rotate it. So it will rotate around its registration point. And did you see that it snaps at every five degrees too? And that just allows you to sort of get it back to horizontal or vertical more easily. If you don't want to do that, you can hold down the control key and let go, and then it won't snap. But snapping's handy. This is a registration point, and it, can, it rotates around that. So there we go. Uh, the registration point also snaps. It snaps in the center there. <laughs> um, and you can hold down the control to not snap that. Uh, you can also hold down the control as you um, scale to scale around the registration point rather than the opposite corner. If you hold down the shift key when you rotate, then it rotates at, at every 45 degrees. All right, so that's, I suppose, most of that. Now, the other thing we have here is we can double click to hide that and double click to show it. We can also double click this one and then start transforming this as well. So cool. So what we've got is a transform manager, which will manage uh, multiple transforms so that there's only one transform at a time. Uh, let's just use this. So this is usable. Oh, look, as we mo move the dial, it tells us information about that. Super duper. Okay, well, let's take a look at uh, how we build this thing then. Let me just bring the transform back on there. Pretty cool, huh? So we'll reduce this and come to here. So we're in Zim Transform. We're in Zim 6.3.0 in a fit template. Can you see that? Okay. We've made a rectangle. We've center regged that on the stage, which is why the registration point shows up in the middle when we first looked at it, because of that center uh, reg right there. And we've moved it over and we've added a transform. We brought the handle size a little bit different. You want to see, or a little bit bigger. The default handle size on desktop is 10. And let's see what that looks like. Refresh here. There's the default handle size. Okay. Uh, I like it even bigger than that. Um, 16, we could even go to 20. I sort of like the, the <laughs> it just feels different. It feels kind of cool on the canvas, you know, it's like a, and it would be good for a tablet. You can, we can see those, we can pick that up with your finger on a tablet, that kind of thing. Now, if you do go to tablets, it, this system hasn't totally been designed to work with um, pinch and zoom. If you want to use a pinch and zoom system to make these things bigger, then you just use pinch and zoom. Don't use transform. Uh, but transform offers more control here, uh, but it's a separate system than your pinch and zoom. All right, let's see. Um, what else can we change about this? Uh, lots of things, actually, but we'll just go through the code. So there's our dial, and we've sent a reg out on the stage, moved it over 200. We've got a transform here. Ah, one of the things I didn't show you with the dial is we've limited the transform. We said don't stretch in the X, don't stretch in the Y, and don't allow rotation. So by default, stretch X, stretch Y, move or yeah moving sizing rotation all of that stuff is turned on but you can turn off any of that stuff so let's see what that looks like here if we go over here and we try and go to the sides note there's nothing on the sides here nor is there anything up in the corner to rotate all we can do is move and scale okay whereas this one uh, when we go to the sides we we see the sides now, that's of interest. Um, you see that how at the sides there's no little box for us, and at the corner there's no little box for us. So uh, we can turn that on so that we can see them. Um, well, maybe before we turn them on so we can see them, let's just finish off the code. We're nearly done. Here's the transform manager here. 
And then we've added the rectangle and the dial to the transform manager. We've also said to persist. I don't know if you noticed that, but when we refresh here, uh, let me just move that around. When we refresh here, it persists. Isn't that cool? Move that over there and it persists. If we rotate it and refresh, it's still there. So that's with the persist and we pass in an ID for persisting. We can't make an ID for you. If we made a random ID, then it would uh, keep on being random as we load the page. So you pass in an ID there. You can clear the persist, and if you clear the persist, you should do so before you add the dial. So shall we try that? We save that, and it looked like this, and we refresh, and now it's back to how it was initially. There's a few other things. You can stop the persist. Um, the transform manager has a variety of things that you can do as well. Um, those, those are some of them, but we'll, we'll take a look at that when we go to the docs. Okay, there's a few more things down there that I want to look at too, but for now, let's go back up to the rectangle and let's show all of the controls. So by default, we only show the rotate control and the registration point. So what we'll do is we'll show the um, stretch. Uh, T, and C and an H. Show stretch colon true. So that will show the ones at the sides. Uh, we don't do those individually. I mean, I suppose we could have, but just show stretch. We'll show both the stretch X and stretch Y. And then the other one is the show rotate like that, colon true. So uh, by doing that, by showing the stretch and the rotate, we get all of our controls. So we refresh here on the rectangle, that is. And there's the boxes for the the stretch and here are the circles around the, the side for the, the rotate. Now you may see something uh, when you stretch you can stretch to the opposite side and see what happens to those circles they just kind of stay like that but then when you let go they pop to the proper rotation place. That was a design decision we could have uh, we could have as, as soon as we swap over the uh, to a negative or positive scale there. We could have swapped these, but I found it was a little bit disorienting when we did that, and I kind of like it this way to show you that, yes, we've uh, moved. Anyway, that was a design decision. All right, so that shows them. Now, you can also go the opposite. You can hide all of them. So let's try hiding them. So these ones, if we just comment them out, they'll automatically hide. And if we say um, move, well, the move doesn't have one. You can't hide the move, uh, but you can hide the corners. The corners are called um, scale. Uh, or show that would be a show scale, like that. Doop, 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 colon false. So by default, that one is true. So let's go and take a look here. Now they're all gone. Oh, except for the, the reg, so I suppose we should hide that one too then, comma, show reg, colon, false. So the scale and the reg show by default, therefore we'd have to turn them off. These ones do not show by default, therefore we don't have to do anything with them. And now we have no visible controls, but look, we can still control everything. I can still use these things to control it, but just no visual controls. So we might want to start adjusting the border there. And there's a border, by the way, and we could do something like border width, colon, oh, I don't know, 10, comma, and how about we set the dashed to colon true. So and now we've got this big border, and we could even set the border color. Shall we do that too? border color colon frame dot pink comma Let's see what that looks like isn't this fun and there we go we've got a, a very happy looking oh you can scale this uh, thing or you can do stuff to it and if we click over here that goes away uh, now it didn't we didn't change this one so that one just looks like the old one we come back here and this is the one that we're editing 
Isn't that neat? You can imagine uh, kids might like that. Now, what if we had this system, but we didn't want to scale on the sides? We only wanted to do this stretch up and down. We did not want to stretch from the bottom up, nor did we want to rotate. So let's practice then. We would say uh, rotate co colon false, comma, um, scale colon false, comma. We do want the resize. All right, so this is where we're at at the moment. We're at the same as before, except we turned off the rotation, so I can't grab on the corners. I can still do that. So, uh, oh yeah, we want to turn that one off, and I can still do that. Uh, oh, and it can still move. So let's turn off the move. <laughs> Forgot a few of these. Move colon false comma stretch x colon false comma. And we refresh here. Um, no, nope, did I do something wrong? Stretch x colon false. Uh, that oh, <laughs> we're we're rotated. Uh, so I can't stretch on the top. I, I didn't realize we were rotated, which is a little bit messed up because now that this is saved in this rotation, I can't rotate it back around. <laughs> to turn these turn this back on just like that, I suppose, and refresh. Oh, um, I could have done it. The other thing that you can do, if you control, um, if you control click, or sorry, control double click, it will reset the um, the shape. So now it's been reset, and let's see. Well, I'll leave the rotate back on like that. Now we have turned the X off, so stretch X is false. You see that was rotated, so. Um, there we go. Stretch X is false, so nothing on the left-hand side. We can no longer rotate, but we can still stretch in the Y, but also from the top and the bottom. So this is what I was wanting to show you, is that how can we do it so that we can only stretch from the, um, the, the top, for instance. Okay. So, down below here, we have if you want to prevent scaling from a certain control point, for instance, what happens is when we set a transform on an object, we're given a transform controls object. And because the transform isn't itself a class and we're not making a transform object, we're just using a method. Um, so if we want to then adjust things based uh, if we want to adjust things afterwards, we've, give, we've been given a transform controls property on that object. And that has various things. It, it can access the certain controls. These are the containers that hold the controls. And then you can get a child, and then this is not the, the, the top one, but rather the bottom one. And I'm setting it's visible to false. So now that I've turned that on, the bottom control will not be active. So let's save that and refresh here. Uh, so as I scroll over there, I have no bottom control. I only have a top control. Isn't that cool? And you can do that with any of the corners, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, OK. So let's uh, swap back out of that. Is there anything else that we want to see? Uh, by the way, this thing, oh yeah, let's go to the documentation and take a look. I think we've played around with it enough and mentioned most of the things that are of interest. I'm just going to bring this back to the default. Do 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 do. Go. Oh, and our handle size will keep big. And refresh here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so the documentation. We'll open up um, the Zim site, go to the docs, and type in transform. And we arrive here. So here's all the stuff. Let's the screen is a bit bigger for us. Mm, right. Oops. I've got to take that out of the documentation right there. Usually we don't keep that in there, you see. Uh, well, we did in, yeah, we did in this, in this case, this is the same one. Okay, move, stretch X, stretch Y, scale, rotate. That is all of the stuff, uh, if you want those controls. 
Double click will allow you to either uh, double click to edit it or not edit it. And by default, it's actually set to false. So by default, you would see controls, but you couldn't double click to make them go away. And that's, um, that's to make sure that the developer doesn't put that in there by mistake without realizing what was going on and then having a, a user double click it and losing their controls and yet they weren't told that that would happen. So that would be up to the developer to tell that user about that system or, or not, or, you know, whatever, or just not use it, et cetera. So that's much like the blob. That is uh, the blob. You can double click to edit as well, but you have to turn it on uh, manually. Well, not manually, but passing in the parameter of true there. This is whether the controls start off visible. Uh, on top it means if, um, if you've got multiple ones going, it'll come up to the top. Show stretch, show rotate, show scale, show reg, show border. Those are just showing the things. Well, the border is a little bit different. Uh, remember, though, that even though you're not showing them, you would still have the sides or the corners and the cursors would work and stuff. Border color, border width, dashed. We saw those custom cursors. Oh, we didn't see that. You can, if you want, use a custom cursor. So that looks like this. Or no, we're, this is a custom cursor. Custom cursors. So what we've been seeing is the custom cursors. And we set that to false then, comma, and we'll view this in a browser. Well, I think it was there somewhere already. Oop. And refresh. Here's what the non-custom cursor looks like. And that all looks fine. And it's like, oh, cool. That's great. Um, rotation's wrong at the moment, I think. And there's it. Can I not rotate at the moment? I can't remember what I've done on my locations. But one of the problems is, is when you do rotate, um, here, here we go, we're rotating. Uh, look, the custom cursor is, is broken because that used to show a rotation and, and this is supposed to scale in that way, but it that's broken. Oh, and this one's broken too. You know, so custom cursors don't rotate. So it's kind of like, oh, sorry, not the custom cursors. Custom cursors will rotate. The uh, system cursors will not rotate. So I would recommend not using the um, system rotate or system cursors then. So we'll turn that off and we're back to our cursors here, uh, which do rotate with the, uh, that was quite a chore to, to make that happen actually. You can see that as it rotates around, it maintains rotation. And same with things like the move as well. If this is rotated, now the move points up and down, these things point to the sides, etc. And this works within scaled containers, within scaled containers that are rotated and, and so forth. And I mean, it was a delight to program. Seriously, it was just like, oh, absolutely wonderful puzzle. So hopefully it's all together. I, <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, back in the docs, we were looking at the docs. To -do, to -do. Handle size, of the reg size, the registration thing is the round thing. We can make that bigger or smaller. We can make the handle size as we sm saw smaller or bigger. Snap distances and snap rotations, you can adjust those as well. Okay, so all sorts of information. Um, you can, by the way, um, just use the rect.transform controls set to, to set all the transforms from some stored data. So here we have a local storage data. And if we've got local storage, anytime the rect has been transformed, you'll be given a transformed event. Uh, I could show you that. We set the local storage data to the rect.transform controls.record. So if we pass in true, that means it'll record it and output JSON. If we don't pass in true, it will not. If you don't know what JSON is, don't worry too much. It's um, you're turning that into a string to be able to store in local day and local storage. You need a string, and then when we're setting it based on that data, we also put the true on, so that we rec we know we're receiving JSON. So um, you'd have to put those parameters in there. If you use the 
as it says somewhere, where is it here, up here, note works with the Zim Transform Manager class to handle multiple transforms and saving data for persistence. So if you put those into the Transform Manager, or even just put one into a Transform Manager, then you that will store the data for you, um, well, if you call the persist method, remember that, back here. Down below, here's our Transform Manager. So you could put just one in there and just say transform manager persist, give it a, an ID, and you don't have to worry about you know manually doing the saving. But there may be times when you want to get the data out of a transform or set a transform that's um, that's based on something else. Okay, I don't know what that would be, but you have that ability just from the transform controls property. So all the transform manager is doing is you setting those transform control properties uh, for multiple multiple ones um, as needed. Okay, definitions of all of the things. Here's information about the transform control object. So its properties. You can access all of the controls. You can also hide and show controls. You can record. Um, you can set set the transforms based on some data, remove them and add them so you can stop using them completely and then add them back again, uh, take away the ability to double click and add the ability to double click back on. To, that would basically mean that you can't, um, uh, you wouldn't be able to turn them off and on if you did that kind of stuff. So disable is, the, the, con the controls might be there, you can see them, but you can't use them. And so that would be disable and enable. Now, oh, one thing I forgot to show you is a resize. So if you make a change manually, for instance, this, like a rect of 250, 200, let's refresh here. So what we've done is we set the transform and then we told the rectangle to move. So um, let's um, you know, I'll just rotate this. Oh, that's scaling. Ro rotate that around just so it's a bit easier to see what's going on and refresh. And what's happened is the rectangle got moved, but the transform did not. Wah! Now, as soon as we operate on this transform, it will place this inside the transform at the, the scales or whatever. But the problem is, that at the beginning, when we manually move this with, uh, with code, um, the transform wasn't resized to that location. So we can easily solve that. And this has happened in other places as well, like blob and various other things. So we call a resize. And in this case, we're calling the resize on the transform manager. You could also call the resize on the rect.transform controls object. So the rect is given to transform controls, and there's the resize method on that. But the um, TM, the, the um, transform manager, will it also has a resize, and it will resize all of them to start. Which is a little bit easier. And we refresh this, and now we're good to go. Okay, uh, back into the documentation events. So it, there's a transformed event anytime you press up on any of the controls, okay, or double click to open or close. And that, that mean, you know, you may as well record the data at that point, right? We, we don't do a transformed event while the thing is being transformed. It's only when you press up. There's also a transform show and a transform hide events. So when you hide and hide, when you double click on it and hide it, uh, you know, you'll get a height event. And if you double click and show it, then you'll get a transform show. Returns the object for chaining. The other one, transform, oh, I, we, we don't have to, we just said go again. I think oops, it's not a transform. Here's the, uh, oh, that's a Zim manager. Why did it pick up that? Interesting. Um, I think I may have misnumbered something there. I'll have to fix that. But uh, the transform manager right here is, um, an example of using it, which is very similar to the example that we were just looking through. So if you need to see that again, here, here is a stripped down version of it. Oh, unique. Um, I'm glad we looked at this. Unique is kind of cool. So if we go in and pass to the transform manager, 
By default, it will be unique, but if we pass in false here, what that means is that we now won't force a unique um, or a, a single transform control showing it at the same time. Like, did you did you notice that? that, that when we play around with this, if we get that one, the other one goes away. This one goes away, and so it's unique. Now, if we refresh here, uh, let me just, I guess, I'll just turn them all off. Not that it matters too much. Um, oh, we're positioning. Uh, we're positioning still. Sorry. It's just, that gets confusing. So we'll turn that off. Now, there is one thing. I can see it already. I, I just did this on purpose. Turn them off. Watch. I double click, and now they're, they're not going. Um, so the problem is, is if we turn unique off, that's sort of like saying, okay, you handle the showing of those things. And we had saved it where they weren't showing. So what we need to do is turn the double click on here, double click. So by default, remember, double click is false. So if we set it to true here and in the other one, now we've set the double click of both of those to true. So we've decided we want both of those to be double click true. And we refresh here. And now we can double click on them. But look, we can move both of them. Now I thought initially that we would only want to move one at a time, just because I thought it would be sort of confusing to operate on these things. But actually, I think now that I've tried it out a little bit, I don't mind having both controls set at the same time, and if you want, you can turn them off. You know, it, it, it sort of makes it a little bit easier to move this stuff around and, and say, oh, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my dial here. Um, well, uh, you do have to sort of think about it a little bit, because watch what's going to happen. If I make this bigger and have a nice big dial and I finish my dial, double click, and now I want to close this one. Double click. Oh, darn. You know what I mean? Now this one's on top. So there's, um, I can't move yet. So I'm not sure if that would be any easier in the other one. We just turned that one off first. We <laughs> put this one in here. And like so there we go. Got a nice big dial that is uh, controlling our, our system. And we're letting the users do this. Not only that, I mean, we're close to an editing tool. Do you see this? This is almost like using a flash IDE where we can move shapes around. It's all recorded. I could let you build your app using Zim. Um, so that will be sort of on the horizon. We had already planned a component editor by uh, you know, having all these sliders and dials, uh, color pickers and stuff, let you build a component and then copy the code into your, your code. We're sort of... Uh, coming closer to an actual editor. I don't know if that will appear in, you know, Zim, Zim Hep, Hep, Zim Hep, man, Hep, Hep. That's seven coming up. Uh, this is, we're in Zim 6 at the moment. Well, that's what's bubbling at Zim. Oh, yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? So have a great day uh, from Zim at ZimJS.com. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. Ciao.